66 million years ago, the Earth was experiencing the final days of the Mesozoic, and more specifically, the end of the late Cretaceous. At the time, titanic animals were widespread throughout the world, and wherever you looked, a behemoth could be found. On land, huge theropods and sauropods ruled, while in the waters, massive mosasaurs dominated with ease. But even the skies during these prehistoric times belonged to the dominion of giants, as the Cretaceous was also home to the most infamous family of pterosaurs the world has ever seen, the Asdarkids. This was a group of pterosaurs that were characterized by their extremely long necks and legs, and were well known for having reached massive sizes. And of all the members to have come and gone, by far the most well known and feared was Quetzalcoatlus, a huge pterosaur that ruled the skies of North America and was so magnificent it was named after the feathered serpent god of the Aztecs. It is known by many as also being the largest animal to ever fly. However, in reality, there was actually another Asdarkid member that not only lived at the exact same time as the Quetzalcoatlus, but was likely even larger in size, perhaps making it the largest animal to ever fly, period. This was the Hatsigopteryx. This huge pterosaur was discovered in the 1970s, when two large pieces of a skull and humerus were found in Romania by a student-led dig team. The bones were so big that at first the paleontologists who studied them believed the remains must have belonged to a new type of theropod, but soon realized based on the structure and shape of the bones that in reality it was a monstrous pterosaur. Although, despite its clearly impressive size, this pterosaur went fairly unnoticed for a long time following its discovery, and was not even named until more than 30 years later in 2002 when it was finally dubbed Hatsigopteryx thambima the Hatzig Basin Wing Monster, with Hatzig portion being a reference to the prehistoric Hatzig Island which this mighty pterosaur once inhabited. Meanwhile, the monster part of its name was a nod to its absolutely absurd size, with paleontologists currently estimating that matured individuals possessed a comparable wingspan to that of the Quetzalcoatlus, which is generally believed to have been up to 11 meters or 36 feet in length making it as wide as the plane Cessna 172. However, some think that the Hatsigopteryx was possibly even a bit larger than this, as its humerus was noted to be longer than that of the Quetzalcoatlus, leading to a higher estimated limit of 12 meters or 39 feet, the largest of any known pterosaur or bird. And even if it didn't achieve this larger wingspan, the Hatsigopteryx still outclassed all other pterosaurs in size, as it was built like a tank, being freakishly robust in comparison to its relatives, while standing at a remarkable height of 5 meters or 16.5 feet, similar to the height of a giraffe. This height, wingspan, and robustness has led to the assumption that it weighed quite a bit more than other giant pterosaurs, including the Quetzalcoatlus, although its exact weight has never been formally estimated. Thanks to its ridiculous size, the Hatsigopteryx isn't only usually considered to be the heaviest and thus the biggest pterosaur ever, but also the biggest terrestrial predator to have been present in Europe 66 million years ago. And strangely enough, its size was mostly due to the place it called home, as at the time of its existence, Europe was an expansive archipelago, consisting of small, medium, and large sized islands, one of which was Hatzig Island. It's thought to have been comparable in size to present-day Ireland, and was separated from land by long stretches of deep ocean in every direction for over 300 kilometers or 190 miles, making it extremely isolated. There was also no giant theropods roaming the island at the time, and very few predators overall, allowing the Hatzigopteryx to fill the role of top predator and grow immensely big with virtually no competition or threat from others. And it didn't simply get a large body on this island, as it also developed a freakishly giant skull that measured 2.5 meters or 8 feet and 2 inches in length, making it one of the biggest skulls of any non-marine animal ever. On top of this, it was unique in that unlike most pterosaur skulls that possessed a grassal build, the Hatsigopteryx had a head that was exceptionally robust and sturdy while containing large ridges suggesting that there was a lot of muscle attached to it in real life. Additionally, its neck was surprisingly strong as well, 
as it sported a short and broad design, with studies finding it to have been about half the length of what would have been expected for a pterosaur. This sturdy neck was further supported by ridges that once again served as muscle attachment points, granting it a seriously high level of durability when maneuvering its titanic skull, with some research finding that this Frankenstein neck could withstand forces up to 10 times its total body weight. This unusual strength, coupled with the proportions of its skull and jaw, has led paleontologists to suspect that this pterosaur was on a completely different level than others when it came to killing likely preying on animals that were too large to fully swallow. In this case, possibly dinosaurs. Because while Hatzig Island played a role in making the Hatzigopteryx a giant, it also played a role in downsizing others, including dinosaurs which were limited in growth due to the restricted amount of resources available on land. This led to the presence of numerous dwarf dinosaurs, including relatively tiny hadrosaurs and even titanosaurs. Some of the dwarf dinosaurs that called this island home were likely victims of this nightmarish predator as juveniles or even adults, with its giant skull likely being its main weapon of choice. It's believed to have killed larger prey by stabbing or bludgeoning the poor animal to death. And of course, non-dinosaurs would have been targets as well, as paleontologists typically believe that the Hatzigopteryx was a terrestrial generalist forager meaning it spent most of its time on land hunting anything that came its way that wasn't too much of a challenge. While land seems to be where the Hatzigopteryx was found most of its life, this behemoth was still very much capable of flight, as demonstrated by its wings which were fully developed and comparable in structure to the wings of other known flying pterosaurs, indicating that its size did not result in it being flightless. Yet, because it did seem so stocky and clunky in appearance, Paleontologists do think that it must have had a way of lightening the weight of its mammoth skull in order to become airborne, with the general belief being that the internal structure of its skull was the answer, as the bones appear to have contained many pits and hollow points, making it less hefty than it appeared but still strong and flexible. On top of this, the wings also contained these same pits and hollow points which is unique amongst pterosaurs and has been likened to the structure of expanded polystyrene, also known in the US as styrofoam. This no doubt aided it in taking flight, yet getting into the air even with a more efficient build was still not an easy task. And to achieve this feat, the Hatzigopteryx may have had to launch itself off the ground by essentially jumping with its limbs. Once in the air, the Hatzigopteryx was once upon a time believed to have been an excellent flyer capable of traversing large amounts of distances without the need for brakes, due to its large wingspan. However, in recent times, a new study has challenged this conjecture, instead claiming that due to its body size, it probably could not fly for long distances and was instead only good at flying short periods before requiring a break. It's also now believed that the Hatzigopteryx would have primarily used its flying capabilities to locate hunting spots and traverse the island it ruled. And of course, being able to get around Hatzig Island in an efficient manner was actually an overpowered tool for the already biggest predator around, as Hatzig Island was dominated by a woodland forest-like ecosystem that made movement quite restricted for some of the larger animals. Along with thick brush, the island was also home to large amounts of rivers and streams, which along with lush vegetation resulted in an array of life which unfortunately would have been subjected to the terror of the Hatzigopteryx. As mentioned, some of these inhabitants included multiple dwarf dinosaurs, such as the Balaur, Magyarosaurus, Paludition, Telmatosaurus, Zalmoxis, Struthiosaurus, Bradyscnemi, Elopteryx, Heptastiornis, and unidentified dinosaurs, including an unnamed theropod. Meanwhile, non-dinosaurs came in the form of the Aladapasuchus, Doratodon, Icinodon, Kogayanin, Barbatodon, Litovoi, Hynina, Baclesius, Albanerpaton, Eodiscoglossus, and an unnamed snake. Even other pterosaurs called this island home, with so far three separate Asdarkids being found that range from 3.5 meters or 11.5 feet to 5 meters or 16.4 feet. Pterodontids were also present, but none have yet been described, and none came close to the size of the Hatzigopteryx, allowing it to be by far the largest carnivore on both land and in the skies. 
It ruled this island no doubt, and enjoyed a tropical paradise as Europe at the time was much warmer than it is today, resulting in Heitzig Island bearing a subtropical climate, with plants mostly being tropical in nature. However, sadly, the rule of the Hatzegopteryx didn't last for long, as sooner rather than later the Cretaceous would be violently ended by a large asteroid impact, which ushered in the extinction of both the non-avian dinosaurs and pterosaurs including the largest animal to have ever soared the skies. If you found this video interesting and you want to see another video about giants turned dwarves and humongous flying creatures, check out my video on the island that turned one of the biggest elephants ever to one of the smallest, while also making a certain bird one of the largest of its kind.